Hello everyone! So today is a special day if you are a Star Wars fan. So I want to thank you for being here and may the 4th be with you. And if you're not of that ilk, may the Schwartz be with you if you are more of a Spaceballs fan. But that's not the video today. Today is something that I've been working on for a while because I get this question a lot and it is so integral to how we do search, how we do machine learning, why graph makes any sense, and that is vectors. What is a vector? What is vector space analysis? And how does this affect the machine learning and search algorithms that we are all using on many different use cases? And that ranges from image processing the whole way to text processing. All right, so let's jump into what is this and why is it so important to what we are all doing and for the things that we use in our day-to-day -day lives like search and recommendation engines. All right, so vectors are one of the main building blocks behind machine learning and search, especially for feature selection, tagging, image recognition, and sentiment analysis, just to name a few. It's also a major component for autonomous vehicles AR, VR, so virtual reality, video games, digital twins, and graph technology. You can see it's got a lot of applications and that's because it's essentially how a computer breaks down the digital information that it sees on a screen, whether it's an image or it's text. Also, there is a lot to unpack with vector space analysis, what it's used for, how these use cases that I just mentioned are using it, so there's gonna be more videos on that later in this year, but for now, I just wanted to introduce this to those that might not be as familiar with it. So vector space is a form of computer understanding, teaching it examples from the real world so that it can make predictions for us humans to then use for decision-making. It stems from linear algebra, and it's one of the oldest forms of NLP. Go and check out this article if you are interested in a retro read on this topic. So vectors contain spatial and geometric information, usually represented numerically. Vectors can represent a number of different factors in order to understand similarity. That's essentially what it's being used for. For instance, cosine similarity is one of the most popular means of understanding the similarity between two different things, where zero is there is no similarity and one being there is absolute similarity. So most machine learning and search works in this way, where the machine is trying to take the input, whatever you've done a search on or whatever you're trying to figure out, and it looks at what it can find that is the most similar in its understanding. And it's looking for similarity based on parameters or weights that us humans have given it so that it understands what is more important to us. So those weights in search could be potentially an exact match is more preferable than a fuzzy match. Or maybe you are a newsreel uh, organization and you wanna make sure that the most current news is represented first in your search so you're going to maybe put a higher weight on date range. In image processing, perhaps safety is your highest concern, so you are going to make sure that anything that would be detrimental to safety has a higher weight to it so that it rises up to the top of the decisions that are being made by the machine. And this learning is like any other kind of learning. It is by example which is also why we need to be very careful with the training sets and the algorithms that we use while we are doing vector space analysis, search and machine learning in general, because we can teach it some very bad things. So we need to be very careful. There's a whole video up here all about what you need to watch out for. Most machine learning needs training sets in order to learn from. It's examples, real world examples to Tell it, what does this thing mean? So a popular way to train machines is with a convolutional neural network. So these can be pre-trained models, which you usually can find with BERT, OpenCV, if you're working with image data, or Amazon Recognition, which is also something that uses images, or Amazon Comprehend, which is more textual based. These also can, and often are, supplemented with additional human tagged training sets. And that's how you make sure that these models that are openly trained 
are also going to meet the needs of your specific use case and your specific users. And calculating the similarity actually has a lot of variation as well. But one of the most common ways that you can determine the similarity is using something called a confusion matrix or an F score. Whole video up here all about that. And essentially it is talking about how confident you can be with your training and how the machine took to that training. So think of it as a report card on how well your machine actually learned from the training sets that you've given to it. So what exactly are you teaching the machine? Well, in essence, you are teaching it the characteristics of a certain entity or feature so that when you ask the machine to retrieve things that are very similar to that example, let's say a cat, it will understand to a level of significance, that's where those F scores come into play, whether it is on the mark or not so that it can give you something that is accurate. So think of a cat as the node and those characteristics of a cat are related to that node. That's essentially a vector. It's also showing the thumbprint of where that vector resides in the object that you are looking at, whether it's a document, a film, or even a taxonomy. So that's in search as well as in image processing. If you didn't correctly translate a stop sign to the action of stopping a vehicle, you're probably in for some trouble. All right, so what are these objects? So objects can be entire documents or entire films. And you can see how one document or one film is related to another thing. That's a common way that search algorithms work. It looks at the entire search index and it determines if one document is related to another document and how that relates to your original query. On the NLP side, vectors and objects could be individual sections of a document. It can also be chapters within a book basically orienting where this vector of an object is. Objects can also be elements within a document or within a film, something that is within the overall asset that you are assessing. This is the most common in NLP where it's trying to extract something maybe from the uh, first chapter of a book or perhaps the intro to a video. Vectors can go even deeper than that and that's when you get into individual features. So if you are doing um, categorization or classification on what an article is about, it will understand what is a cat versus what is a tiger. And when you're looking at images, it's looking at the individual pixels even to understand what is in that image so that if you are retrieving something that is about children playing soccer, that it will understand what a soccer ball looks like versus what a kickball looks like and make sure that you get the right image back. So this similarity piece is looking at how one vector relates to another vector in an array. And this is orienting where that vector resides within an entire book. If you're looking at a book chapter, where the soccer ball is in an image. For instance, if the soccer ball is on the ground, perhaps the children are kicking it versus a soccer ball being in the air where you might be uh, doing a headbutt move with your soccer ball. Part of this is also understanding the overlap of characteristics between two different vectors to understand how far apart those vectors are in similarity. So how many characteristics does a cat have with a tiger? And how often is a cat mentioned with a tiger? And if you're working in the knowledge graph space, how explicitly are those two things related? Velocity or acceleration is yet another thing that vectors are good at representing. And that is how fast, such as with a video, or in which direction the data is being read because not all text goes from left to right. Some goes right to left and some goes from north to south. So being able to represent an orient how the machine should view that vector in relation to all the other things that it sees on the screen is incredibly important to any kind of machine learning. It also helps in understanding which direction the line is going and how long it is. So if you are looking at a movie clip, how long is the movie clip? What is the start and what is the end? How long was that duration? Or on a textual basis, how many words are separating cat from tiger? This is something that k-means actually uses to understand how often and in what direction and within how many words 
something is being mentioned. This helps with those similarity scores. All right, so let's put this all into practice and let's use our cat example. Now, these are both hypothetical, but it's really here just to give you some examples on how this looks like in practice. So let's say that I am driving an autonomous vehicle. So it's driving itself. It really needs to understand all of the information that is in its peripheral as well as directly in front of it. So in our example, what if a cat was running towards the road in front of us? Well, an autonomous vehicle would see that as a potential threat to life. And if we have coded it so that uh, the life of something outside of the vehicle was important to us, then we could have had it stop so that the cat could run across the street without getting hurt. But if it didn't understand the difference between a cat and a tiger, again, hypothetically, what if a tiger was running towards my car and it was an autonomous car? Well, that might be a threat to me. A house cat might not be a threat to me, but a, a tiger certainly would be. So understanding the difference between a cat and a tiger would be very important in this situation. And perhaps because my life is highly weighted in the algorithm, the car will instead of stopping to let a cat cross, it's going to speed up to get away from the tiger that is now chasing me. So you can see in this example that the programming and the weights on the machine understanding is incredibly important. So yes, vectors are helping machines understand the world around us, but it is still up to us humans to teach the machines what to do with that information. So if you are interested in more about this autonomous vehicle conundrum, I actually did a lot of research back in the day on the trolley experiment. If you don't know what that is, go check it out. But I can do a whole video on that if you are interested. Leave it in the comments below if you are. So now let's take a textual example. Let's grab some reviews from IMBD. So these two examples are kind of similar. They're talking about a lot of the same things. You can tell that Nat Geo, National Geographic, and Netflix are both streaming services. Okay, that's good. Context from our machine learning training has taught the machine that these two are streaming services. It also understands that both of these pieces of text are talking about documentaries that are also about tigers. That's where we can get into some trouble though if we are not training our machines well enough to understand the differences between those two vectors. So first of all, you can see how these two things are different based on how far apart they are in the text. The other thing you can tell is the context is slightly different because of that orientation. So whereas the Nat Geo example is talking about domesticated cats, the Netflix example is talking about cats in the way of all cat lovers, people that like tigers, lions, and house cats all together. Those are different contexts. But if you train your machine well, these vectors can be processed to understand that this is different. And this is incredibly important for disambiguation in search when you are looking for recommendations on the next video uh, to watch in your streaming services. If it doesn't understand that this tiger and the tiger mentioned in Nat Geo are different, you're going to get very different results. So you can see why this really starts to get important. The understanding of not just the characteristics of the vector itself, but how it resides within the text within the actual context is where the specialness of machine learning comes into play and where we put the weights to make sure that the machine is doing what we expect it to do. In both examples of text and image processing, these features are being extracted as entity or vectors, and those vectors have characteristics because of the training that we've done with machine learning, as well as where it actually shows up either in the textual document or in the field of vision with the autonomous vehicle. Vectors will also be able to tell you the differences between the two things. In the visual, we saw that there is a difference between a cat and a tiger and why the actions pertaining to those two things would be different. And in the textual base, we saw how the difference between a cat and a tiger and the different context of the word cat, meaning maybe different things, could either potentially hurt or improve your recommendation system. We saw how in this example, if you didn't have the right training sets, things could go a little awry. We also saw how the weighting of these vectors is incredibly important. The weighting is something that 
is more important on the processing side as in the decision making from the human's perspective. But humans also have to determine what weight goes on to some of these vector characteristics. All right, so I hope those two examples helped you understand what a vector is, what are some of the information aspects of a vector and how they're used in machine learning in search. There was a lot more to unpack on why vectors are so important, how they are used, what use cases are attached to them, and the methods of processing them. But those are all something that you can dig into with some of the resources I have below for this video, as well as other videos that I am going to be releasing later this year. So I hope this video has helped you get your toes wet a little bit on what is a vector and how it is used. I hope this has inspired you to dig into vectors a little bit more and at the very least understand why they are so incredibly important to machine learning and search. All right, so with that, I wanna thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.